Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Zebu Nation Plays Endless Space 2. This is a new series that I'm going to be starting. Hopefully, I can play more games than just uh, Football Manager, which is what I had been playing pretty much exclusively on uh, YouTube. But uh, maybe I'll do it on a regular basis. You know, a couple times a week, I'll play some different games and maybe get a little bit more variety onto my channel here. Uh, anyway, Endless Space 2, it's the, uh, sequel to Endless Space, a game that came out a couple of years ago from Amplitude Studios. You might know them, basically they're famous for the Endless franchise, which is, uh, Endless Space, Endless Legend, and Dungeon of the Endless, so they enjoy the Endless title there. But, uh, Endless Legend, I think, is a game that got a little bit more play than Endless Space. I know it ended up on, like, Xbox, and it might have ended up on PlayStation, I'm not sure. But, uh, I didn't really play that game much. I preferred the Space game much more. And, uh, what this is, this is a 4X strategy game. Meaning, what does the 4X stand for? Explore, expand, exterminate and x something else anyway uh basically you start out with a small planet usually or an empire or whatever a city in different you know whatever genre you're playing in and then you have to explore the space around you and conquer and do all that kind of stuff so uh i enjoyed this game last time it was a little bit simple it was a little bit easy honestly so it seems they've improved a lot for Endless Space 2. I've played around with a little bit. I've played a couple of hours already. Uh, but for now, I'm going to start a new game. Going to start... Uh, this is still in beta. So there are some things still closed down for you. Like uh, you can only play single player. You can't play multiple players at the moment. Uh, size, age, number of constellations... Uh, game difficulty is what I want. Yeah, I want to play on hard difficulty because uh, medium difficulty is just not not where it's at. So, yeah, I think we're good here. Let's start with the United Empire. I like them. They're more like they're basically like your generic human race. And then we'll uh, we'll discover the other races as we come across them, I suppose. Or maybe not. Maybe we can look. Um right now they've got 5 races that you can be as i mentioned the united empire uh each race has their own backstory and all this crazy lore that goes around with it uh you've got the siphons who are a uh, peace-loving scientific type the cravers who are insectoid hunter types um they're good at raising crops and having lots of population uh, the United Empire is good for uh, expansion and, like, uh, political kind of stuff. Uh, what are they called? The Voidiani? Uh, these are the industrial type people. And then the Lumeris, uh, they're the trade and economy people. So, you know, depending on how you like to play your 4X, your strategy games... You can pick the race for you. But honestly, all the races can do all the things. So even if you pick one, you're not necessarily pigeonholed into just doing that thing. You're going to need to do everything that comes with a 4X strategy game, no matter who you pick. So anyway, uh, I'm just going to pick the most human-like because that's what I do. I'm kind of boring. And here we go, we're connecting to the server. Uh, there's a lot of sort of Starship Trooper vibe with the uh, the human race. Um, I'm trying to think of, uh, there was a game, like a twin stick shooter that came out last year that had a very similar vibe. Under the visionary leadership, we have become a proud and powerful nation. It's time to rise up grasp our future and seek our destiny among the stars you can already see like the propaganda going on here imagine the future that we can build sexy construction lady learn new skills build big ass ships 
and through their conquests secure our place in this rich galaxy. We see some trade ships going out. We will discover new science and new life. I've got the sound turned off in case you didn't know. We will greet new peoples and turn them into new patriots. Oh, look at the alien subjugations going on there. Together we will leave our mark on history and reach new heights. Now if you notice there, uh, this is where the Starship Trooper stuff comes in, right? Because, I mean, look at these guys. Very militaristic, very like, well, build a brighter future together. And then you look at their city and it's like, you know, industrial wasteland. But that previous scene where you saw them like meeting new aliens and the alien was offering them like a bowl of fruit or something. And then the next scene, he's standing on a pile of alien skulls with broken fruit everywhere. Uh, you know, not very good. But the thing about about this race, these human people, like, I've already forgotten their names. Uh... The Federation, the Federated Systems. Uh, they do meet a lot of other races. There's like, um, in this game, there are major races and there are minor races. And these people are pretty good at getting those minor races to join up with them. So that's definitely a, a bonus of these guys. So like, like everything in one of these strategy games, you got different ways to win the game. You got score, you got military, and then of course you'll have you know industrial, scientific, political. You know they're not activated yet, but they will be. Trust me, they will be. And uh, I played this game a little bit, and the politics are very interesting. They they've definitely beefed that part of it up. And as you can see here, um, here's here's the politics screen. And this isn't this isn't external politics. It's not dealing with other nations. This is dealing with your own internal politics. So right now I have two political parties. I have the militarists and the industrialists. And so each one allows you to uh, have different laws that in in effect in your your empire. And you can pass new laws and you can do all kinds of cool stuff with this. You can have uh, Every year there's votes, and they vote different parties into power. And based on who's in power, you have to kind of tweak your empire to match uh, match their philosophies. So we can look at, uh, we can pass a new law here, possibly. So the law we have in place right now is dust windfall. And what that is is 25% of industry spent for buildings uh, are converted into dust and dust is the form of money here um you know what i'm gonna set a timer just so i don't sit here and talk for like hours and hours and hours uh so let's try to pass a new law that's a money law new colony everybody loves a new colony plus 25 happiness for five turns when acquiring a new colony either by invasion or through completion of an outpost Dust, not rust, plus 25 happiness. Oops, what is this? Uh, plus 3 gold per turn on planets. Minus 1 happiness. No, that's no good. Rare metals, that's no good. Fleet cost, we don't really need fleet. Safe skies, nope. So, new colony is good to vote for because we're going to be expanding. That's the first thing we need to do. So, uh, well, we can't afford the new law. Okay, never mind. We don't have enough politics built up. Okay, so there's, yeah, there's different currencies in here. There's dust, which is basically gold. I uh, have 50 gold. And there's a star rating, which is your political power. Or your political currency. They call it influence, I suppose. But uh, we don't have any influence right now, so uh, we're out of luck. Uh, trade resources, nothing much going on here nothing much going on here science this is this is probably what they want us to do is they want us to do science stuff so again it's a strategy game whoa what happened there it's a strategy game which means you've got a tech tree and their tech tree is more is less a tree and more of a book 
So you got different like chapters in the book and different, you know, different pages. So, and you've got different eras. So right now we're in era one, which is sort of like the first tech level, I guess you could say. And this game is always balanced out between like, uh, it's sort of rock, paper, scissors ish, uh, in a lot of ways and including in the tech tree and including in how you build your empire. So you can build your empire focusing on on like science, you can build it focusing on industry, you can build it focusing on military, or you can build it focusing on uh, colonization. And that's kind of how the, the tech tree, or the tech book here it goes, is, you know, you've got your uh, colonization where you can, you can have different planets that you can colonize and you need to research how to colonize those different types of planets. And the planets are based on like uh, basically the geology and the weather types of the planets. So you've got like cold planets and hot planets and you can even colonize like lava planets and stuff if you have the right research. And this is the kind of research that you need to do. And then down here you've got your military research in terms of defenses and shields and lasers and all this kind of stuff that you've got to research. Uh different types of this is more of the industry here in the yellow so you've got different types of goods and financing and metallurgy and all this stuff xenobiology um, there's just so many things to research that you never really know this is more of like politics and uh, food and things like that food is important because that helps you grow your colonies. Um, I usually like to focus on food and money and production in that order. Um, so we'll go to plus five food. Twenty-five food on a system level, on original empire. Do, 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 do. All right. Well, before we decide on the science, let's take a look at our our empire here, such as it is. So we are currently over here on Pegasus One. It's colonized, as you can see. We have three out of five population here. Uh, Rallins are the base human type population, but then we have another type of population, the Hisho. So as you can see, we already have multiple species on our home world, so that's very interesting. I don't know if these guys are like slaves or whatever. Aggressive and martial, the Hisho are known for their willingness to defend their honor and their allies. So they're probably like our warriors. And then the Raylands are our general population. Uh, it's a pretty good planet here. 12 food, 15 production, as you can see up here. 12 gold, uh, 15 science, and 4 pol political power. Now you can look at these two planets here. They're currently inhospitable, which means we don't have the research available to actually colonize them. But this is a swamp planet. This is an arid planet. So when we go to our research, we want to find the research that will allow us to populate swamp planets and arid planets. Uh, let's see, anything else going on? You have green. You have, uh, you have different things going on here. So on the left is the base numbers, as I mentioned. Food, production, gold, science, political. And then here you've got the planet size, the planet type. Um, the main resource on here which is water uh, you have um, a trait kind of thing which is seismic activity that's not great because it affects you negatively but again you can get research to counteract these traits and then the other trait is a hollow planet and this is a good trait it gives me bonuses to things so you know this is a decent planet uh, Pegasus 2 again medium arid it's dry, so that's not a great trait. 
and but it does have a life form and anytime you see this little glowing snowflake with a question mark and all this stuff going on here that means it's something you can scan and you can get a bonus for scanning it so we're going to want to do that pretty soon but first let's go back to our research and i know that uh let's see planetary colonization crops it's all about crops yeah, I guess we'll research that first. That's hyper cipher. Okay, that's colonized steps. We don't need that. Colonized swamp. There we go. So fluid nanodynamic research will allow us, once it's finished, we'll start it up. It'll allow us to colonize that swamp planet. Now, on most games, like Civilization or whatever, you build a colonist, and then that colonist goes out and colonizes other planets. And that works here too, but um, this game has another mechanic, which is if you've already colonized a planet within a system, you don't need to send a colony ship over there. You can just kind of do it automatically as long as you can colonize that planet. All you have to do is click on it, and eventually you'll just start to transfer uh, population over to that planet once it's colonized. So that's kind of cool. But in the meantime, we will need to build a colony ship. But first, uh, we start out with a patrol ship right here. Oh, we start with two patrol ships. That's cool. Um, patrol ships are good because they can scout, and they can scout in two ways. Number one, they can launch a probe off into the void, and that'll just send it wherever you send it. It'll go, and it'll just find whatever's there. But then the other thing it can do is it can scan planets. Uh, so we'll do that. We'll start an expedition here, and we can scan Pegasus 2. So we'll do that. So there we go. We launched a probe there, scanned it. Uh, successful expedition on Pegasus 2. We've discovered super spuds. It's a resource, so there's super potatoes, and we get plus five super spuds as loot. So there we go. So that was fun. Uh, and there are different quests for... Um, scanning planets and getting resources and there's all kinds of stuff there's so many things in this game that's why i like it new luxury resource discovered yay we can upgrade our economy based on the super spuds hooray uh here's another thing like i said this game has so many elements to it it's hard to introduce them all in one video but i'm gonna try here we have our heroes dimitri lenko has joined our empire so heroes are just special little characters that you can use to either improve your fleets or improve your planets. And they can get involved in the political system. They can get involved in all kinds of things. They can be involved in battles and just so many things you can do with these heroes. You're going to want as many of them as you can afford. So we're going to look at assigning some skills here. Uh, take a look at our hero overview first. As you can see, here's his spaceship. So he's got his own spaceship. And here's his hero. He's a Terran. He's a counselor. He's an industrialist. So that's his political party. He's, in, he's with the industrialist party. He's healthy. Um, he has one skill right now, the hero command skill. So he's right now he's a blank slate. We can do whatever we want with this guy. We can set him up however we want. Uh, you can see there's not a lot going on here. This is just his ship skills. It's got you know it's got a lot of health, uh, a little bit of offensive ability, a lot of defensive ability. This is a pretty decent ship to start out with. So if you want to be very aggressive and you want to like start exploring and fighting and all that stuff right away, you might want to assign your hero to your fleet, and so you can send him out because he's his ship is like better than any ship that you're going to have to start out with. Uh, but if if he gets killed in battle, then you lose him for like several, like a year, basically. Uh, but they don't die. Well, they didn't die in the first game that I recall. So that's not to say that they won't die in the second game, but they definitely do get injured and they're out for a while. I know that for sure. Uh, so let's go back to the skill tree, and each each skill has like three different paths, 
and within each path you have two choices. So you have the three different paths here. You have the um, United Empire specific skills. You have counselor specific skills because that's the kind of character he is. He's a counselor. And then you have the generic skills. So everybody has these two skills. One is the optimal operations expert. Basically, if you put him on a, if you assign him to a planet, he will make every planet in that system a little bit better. Plus one food and plus one production. Or if you assign him to a fleet, he gets the cosmic castaway skill, which gives plus two experience per turn and plus one vision range for his ship. So plus two experience on your whole fleet and his ship gets plus two vision. Uh, so that's an interesting thing. We've got zero skill points right now. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So we can't we can't build any of these skills anyway. I thought I thought we started with one skill point, but I guess I was wrong. Uh. So anyway. Uh. He's a counselor. I like to assign this guy to the planet first. Where's my assignments here? Hero management. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. So we can either assign him to a fleet or assign him to the system. We're going to assign him to the system. We only have one system. So we'll assign him there. So he's going to start affecting the politics of the system. He's going to start affecting the uh, industry and the economy of this system for as long as he's assigned to it. It's a very cool, very neat little thing that they do. All right. Um, uh, just looking at the UI here, uh, use the, the scroll wheel to scroll in and out. Uh, use the left uh, left button and the mouse to move left and right and do all that stuff. Down here on the right-hand side, there'll be these little tabs that pop up and tell you anything that needs to be done. So click on this one tell us our duty your imperial majesty it's a time of peace and prosperity for the empire usurpers have been vanquished agreements resolved wars ended the empire is truly united now is the time for our great nation to forge a path into the stars to bring great civilization to other worlds to impress upon any other races we discover that our way is the best okay so there's our uh uh marching orders from the empire Perer. And here, of course, you've got the giant end turn button. Uh, you've got all the different little tiny icons for the other races. We haven't met any of them yet, so they're all question marks here. Uh, this, you've got two fleet buttons here. Uh, the first fleet button will take you to any fleet that still has moves available. Anytime you click on it, it'll just take you to a fleet, so you can see it right there. It's bouncing back and forth between the two fleets I have available. I have a settler and a patrol ship. And then this second button down here, this tiny little button, if you click on that, when it's activated, it will um, it will launch any moves that are waiting from the previous turn. We don't have anything from the previous turn because it's the first turn. And then, of course, the little wrench here is a game button. Uh, up here, you have all your different symbols for the different things you can do. Uh, you've got your empire information, you've got your production or your politics here, you've got your systems, you got your science, you've got your fleets. So as you can see, I've got two fleets here. Uh, you've got your uh, heroes. Then this would be your events and quests and things like that. And then this would be um, foreign politics, basically. The little handshakey thing. Oh boy, anything else we need to look at? Well, let's let's look at moving our fleets around. We don't want to move our settler hither and yon, but we will launch a probe. How about that? We'll sh we'll show you the launching the probe. Now, as you can see, coming out from this uh, our solar system here, we've got a bunch of lines, and each line will take us to a new solar system. So we know that there are five solar systems connected here, but we don't know what's in, in any of these solar systems. So there's two ways you can do it. You can just click on the line and send your ship there, 
willy-nilly, or you can launch a probe. I'm going to launch a probe in this direction because there are two. Now you can either launch it directly down the line, and that way you'll know you'll hit the solar system, or you can launch it in between and maybe get both the solar systems. So I'll do that. And there we go, launching a probe. Uh, and then I'll send the scout this way. So this way I can scout two directions at once and save myself a little time for next turn. Uh, I don't want to leave, I don't want my colony ship to do anything just yet. So I'll end the turn. Oh, final thing. We've got production. The Pegasus system is idle. So what do you want to build, basically? As you can see, I've got 15 production over here and 50 gold. Um, producing items doesn't necessarily take gold unless you want to buy it immediately. Then it takes a lot of gold, but it does take production. And once you build like a structure or something like that, it will start costing you turn gold per turn. So here down on the bottom left here is the um, the production screen. It's very tiny, but uh, you get used to that. So these are the things I can build right now. Not a lot, honestly. I can build a settler. I can build a patrol ship. I can build an interplanetary transport network. And if you look over there on the left, you'll see that if I build that, it will gain me plus one production per person on a planet or plus three production per... Uh, planets with strategic deposits on them. It'll cost me 280 production. It'll take six turns. It'll um, give political bonus to the industrialist party. It'll cost me four gold per turn once it's built. And it'll be plus 28 influence. So uh, your empire has a sphere of influence around it. And the more you build your empire up, the greater that sphere grows. And uh, that has other effects on different parts of the gameplay. The other thing I can build is I can build Denark Q University. Denark? I would call it just Denark University. Uh, and this would give me plus two... Uh, I'm not sure what that symbol is. Uh, the like multicolored symbol. I'm not sure what that is. It's not science. I'm not sure what that is. Anyway, it gives me plus two of something per person on planet. It also gives me plus 20 uh, happiness, and plus five politics. Uh, it costs 780 production, so that's a lot. It takes 15 turns. It gives uh, political impact to the ecologists costs six gold but it adds a lot of influence 78 influence uh, then cerebral reality I could build that uh, I, I do like building this because this is a good one it increases the gold on your planet by 10 and the science by 10 as well it costs 160 production only takes three turns only costs two gold so I might build that just to build my gold up now uh, the drone network uh, increases food and production. All right, this is probably the more sensible thing to do. So I will at first in it do this. I'll build the drone network. Uh, it'll improve my system. It'll give me plus five production and plus five food, which plus five food will help me get more people. And plus five production will, of course, help me build things faster. It only, um, ta it'll only take three turns and it'll cost me two gold. So We'll start with that, do the cerebral network next. All right, so now we should be able to end our turn. There we go. So as you can see with this game, there's a lot of stuff to get used to, a lot of stuff you gotta wrap your head around. Um, you've always gotta be thinking about the balance of your empire, balance between uh, food, production, gold, science, uh, do you want to expand? Do you want military? There's just so many things. You know, you got to think about your politics. You got to think about other races. All right, we ended our turn, so we'll zoom out a little bit here. As you can see, here's the, the blue line here is the influence of our empire. We're not influencing much at the moment. We're influencing a bunch of deep space. Our probe has moved a little, 
But if we click this button here, we'll move a little more. There's our ship. We found a new system, the Karas system. Uh, I keep wanting to right click, but it's left click. All right, so let's take a look at the Karas system. Karas 1 is a huge tropical planet. It's colonizable. Karas 2 is a large gas frozen planet. It is inhospitable. Uh, Karas 3 is a huge Velt planet. It's also colonizable. So that's good. Two colonizable planets in one system. Now we can look at this system and see what's happening here. Um, the Velt and the Tropical. So got to look at the planets and see which will give you the better benefits first. So the Tropical will give us three food, six production, three gold, three science. Uh, the Velt here, Karas 3, will give us 4 food, 4 production, 5 gold, 4 science. And then the large frozen gas, we can't colonize it, but later in the game, if we do colonize it, it'll give us 30 science, which is pretty good. Uh, it won't give us much of anything else, but later in the game, you're going to need science more, you know, to get, um, to get some of those higher end... Um, uh, what am I thinking? The higher end research. So that'll be a good planet for like mid game stuff. Um, in the meantime, we've got a couple of uh, things we can scan for. Each planet has something we can scan for, so that's good. I think. Uh, you know, we'll probably send our colony ship. I mean, why not, right? Take the first, always take the first thing available to you. That's my motto. Never look around for anything else. Uh, let me see, can I actually... Hello. I want to zoom in on this. I can't zoom in on this any more than that. All right. Oh, what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? I sent this guy packing. I didn't mean to do that. Clicking around sometimes happens. All right. So he's going to the next system. See you later, buddy. Have a good trip. All right. Let's take a look back at our home system. See what's happening here. We're colonized here. We're still inhospitable there. It's not a lot we can do. We're building our drone network. It takes two turns. I think, you know, the other thing you can do is you can queue stuff up. So I know I'm going to want the Cerebral Reality. I know I'm going to want another Settler and another Patrol Ship. So that's my next uh, 11 turns all mapped out there. Uh, not much else we can do this turn, so we'll just end the turn. Did I start my timer? I did start my timer. Alright, so we got enough time to do another turn here. Maybe another couple turns. Let's click the little forward button, and that moves our ships. So, as you can see here, sometimes it takes longer than one turn to reach a system. So, this system out here is farther away it's it's like the kessel run you know it's 12 parsecs or something uh so here we go we can settle a planet as you can see they've got little flags on them which means they're settleable and so what you do is you would click on the colonize button and then decide which planet you want and so the question is do we want a planet with more food more gold more science or planet with more production and I think it's pretty safe to go with the planet with more food and more gold and here's the reason why because in order to colonize other planets you need population so you get population from food and therefore usually the first planet in a system that I like to populate is one that has both food and production because you're going to need production to build things um, so what you want to stay away from, you want to stay away from colonizing a planet like Karas 2 first, because it does have food, but it doesn't have production, which means that 
you could colonize it, but then your colonists would be basically stuck there without being able to produce any goods, right? So I want to build it here, Cars 2, because that will allow me to colonize Cars 3 quicker. And it's, it's a bigger planet, which means it will have more population available to us, so we'll do that. That's my reasoning, anyway. Other people's reasonings may vary. So, uh, I can't build anything yet. I don't have any, I don't have enough resources to build something straight away. But as you can see, look at that. Look at all the population available. I mean, most of them are locked, but, <laughs> you know, they'll become unlocked eventually. But there we go. We've colonized this planet, Karas. Karas 3. And, uh, yeah. Our little empire is already expanding, and we'll end our turn. There's there's a lot of times when turns go really quickly, but uh, we now have 49 political influence. We've gained we're gaining plus 11 per turn. We now have 148 gold. We're gaining plus 14 per turn, so that's all good stuff. Uh, we're still two turns away from fluid dynamics. Now we can look at, uh, where did politics go? Politics here. Do we have enough to pass the colony law? Yeah, we only, we needed, uh, we need 59. We need 50 uh, influence and we don't have 50 influence. We have like 40, we have 49. We're one away from being able to pass that law or being able to put that law up for a vote. I don't know if it's automatically passed or not. Um, so we're currently, our hero here is getting close to leveling up and you level up just by, uh, you know, if you're on a fleet, you level up by doing fleet stuff. And if you put your guy on a planet, he'll just sort of level up on his own. Uh, let's see, we've built the drone networks are complete. So that's going to give us plus five production and plus five food. And next we're building the cerebral reality. Let's take a look at our planets here. We're here in the Pegasus system. How uh, does it show? Yeah, it shows our production here. Um, you know, we, we're making 29 food. So it starts off with 12 food from the planet, plus 45 from the system improvements, minus 4.7 from consumption, minus 5 from manpower, minus 15 from outpost, minus 2.6. So you can see all the stuff that uh, that influences your planet and boosts it up or boost it down so you got to pay attention to some of this stuff later in the game once you start uh, your empire starts fluctuating based on you know if you got too many ships or you know too many colonists or whatever it is your the economy of your planets will start to change and and you'll have to manage them a little bit tighter but right now we don't need to do a lot of tight management let's move our ships around we found another pole another solar system Lanaka 1, medium arid planet, inhospitable. Lanaka 2, a lava planet, also inhospitable. Lanaka 3, a jungle planet, inhospitable. And Lanaka 4, a tundra, it is colonizable. And Lanaka 5 is a desert, inhospitable. Makes a lot of gold, though. Look at that. So we got some real interesting planets there. There's my timer. Let's stop that. But uh, this shows a little bit more of the diverse biomes that you get on the different planets. Lava planets are usually good for production. Desert planets are usually good for gold. Uh, you know, they, they sort of fall into those different categories. Water planets and cold planets are usually good for science. Um, uh, you know, 
Earth-like planets are usually good for, you know, sort of average at everything. But right now, if I wanted to colonize a planet, I could colonize uh, La Roca 1. It might not be a bad idea, although I don't have a colony ship. <clears throat> but uh, that would get me a lot of gold. And at this stage of the game, you want to be colonizing as many planets as possible. But we can also... Uh, Search for some mysteries of the cosmos here. Each of these, we've got one, two, we've got three of them. So we'll search for this one here. Fire a probe at Lonica 4. See what we get. A successful expedition. Your analysis of subterranean on planet LaRocca 4 was successful. I discovered dark glitter, a, research, a resource deposit. Plus five dark glitter as loot. Uh, I'm not sure what dark glitter is used for at the moment. Uh, plus 50 maximum stock on system. Okay. Not sure what that means, but uh, they'll usually at some point they'll there'll be a screen or something that says, "Do you want to spend this research on a resource on this thing?" Or if you go into the trade. Trades and resources. You can see the different things here. I got plus five dark litter. I got plus five super spuds. So I could use these to trade with other, you know, kind of like civilization. You can trade resources to other people for money or whatever. Uh, you can do that here, but you can also use these to build certain things. So uh, that's my timer, and I guess we'll end it there. You got at least a little bit of an idea of what's happening here with this game. Again, 4X, space exploration. We didn't get into any fights or anything. It's got an interesting combat system, an interesting combat mechanic. I'll try to show that at some point. But for now, I guess we'll end it there and say uh, see you next time. Bye.